RC Jim, and this is another in our series of uh, detailed videos on how to use your NX series transmitter. In particular today, what we're going to be looking at is the analog switch setup and the digital switch setup. Now as you think about those uh, two particular items, first off you have to think about what's analog and what's digital. Analog is where you have a continuous change from one extreme to another with minute little variations all along the way and you just move it gradually to wherever you want. Digital is just fixed positions, 0, 1, 2. Okay? So, what these allow you to do is to switch back and forth between those two sorts of things. Now first off, for an analog switch setup, what that's going to do is as you take a control that's an analog control as you move it up, when it gets to a certain point, it's going to act as if it was a switch, and it's going to flick to a switch position. You know, whatever switch it is, it considers it switched to that position, only it's treating this as a switch. You move up to another point, it's going to just consider that to be another switch position, right up to the top. And so you can have three positions on an analog control, uh, that makes it as if it was a switch, while it still works in the way it was meant to work. Like, say, in this case, is a throttle. It continues to be a throttle, and the throttle continues to work gradually, just like it did before. It's just, in addition to that, it's also considered to be a switch with three distinct positions. Okay, a, a digital switch, on the other hand, is where you've got a digital switch, such as one of these, that instead of operating something that has just only three distinct positions, it's actually operating a servo, and it's moving that servo into one of three distinct positions. So, for example, flaps. That's exactly how that's operating. Flaps is operating a servo. In this position, the flaps are up. In that position, they're in a medium uh, sort of position. Uh, and uh, in that position of the switch, they're all the way down but it's doing it, uh, a digital switch is doing it on an analog control. There's a servo that could have continuous movement, and if you wanted to, you could hook up flaps to, to a stick, and you could move them just like your aileron or elevator. Um, but no, we don't want that. We want it, you know, distinct. So that's the type of thing that you'd use a digital switch set up for. And an example of that might, say, be uh, spoilers or uh, air brakes, on um, either a dive bomber or a sailplane. Uh, you don't want it to be equivalent to flaps because if you've got flaps on it, you want to use the flaps for increasing lift and um, you know creating a bit of drag, but <laughs> no more drag than what you have to. Um, whereas the dive brakes, you know, you want to really put on the brakes and that's used in a different situation. Okay, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, analog switch setup. We go in there and uh, it shows you a table. Uh, so you've got throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. So those are your four, aileron, uh, four analog uh, controls. So each of the joysticks has got two things on it, and a total of four all up. Um, it gives you a setting for the where it changes from position zero on a digital switch and position one. So if, say, the throttle is going to be considered a digital switch, it says right there at minus 60 is where it's going to change. So it's in position 0 right now. When I get up uh, to, uh, just above minus 60, then it changes to position 1. And then this next column, position 1 to 2, is where it changes from position 1 to position 2. So here right now you can see that it's set at 20. So over here is where the uh, control actually is. So when I move that up to be above plus 20, then all of a sudden it's gone to position 2, and it stays there all the way up. So as you see this uh, uh, column here with the 2s and the 1s, uh, that's the digital switch position that's governed by the position of the switch. And it's just three distinct positions, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, now you might wonder what you'd use that for, <laughs> and uh, I kind of scratch my head a little bit. I, I certainly don't use it for anything. But just as an example of the type of thing that you could, let's say that you wanted to use your throttle 
instead of a mode switch. So with this I've got low mode, uh, mid mode, and a high rate mode for the control surfaces. So let's say instead of using a switch uh, like this for that, I wanted to use the throttle as a switch. So when the throttle is low, I want low modes. So typically I'm landing, I'm doing something that's kind of you know very sensitive and I want very uh, limited control movements and things like that. So low throttle might be um, low rates. Mid throttle is when I'm cruising around and something in the middle is probably good for that. And if I'm really hooning around and having a blast and going crazy, I can have the high rates, high throttle and, and go for it, you know. Um, so you could set up the throttle with uh, rates such as this. And then uh, what you would do is you'd go back uh, into your um, uh, system setup menu. And of course you pick yes. And you go down there to um, F mode setup. And I've already <laughs> done this here, but where normally you'd have switch C set up there. Instead of switch C, you select that and you move the throttle and it picks a throttle switch for that switch. You select it and now the, um, the throttle is going to give the different modes. So you can see right now flight mode 1, move it up a certain point, changes to flight mode 2, move it up to a certain point, I'm in flight mode 3 at the same time that I'm handling the throttle. You might come up with other ideas, and as you do, hey, put them down in the comment section. Uh, I'm sure everybody would appreciate uh, the wisdom that you have to share as well. Okay, uh, so that pretty well covers the analog um, uh, setting. So let's get back out, go back into the function list, and we now go down to the digital setup. Now, digital setup. Uh, we are going to do something like what we do with the flaps, where the switch in one position is a certain percentage, plus or minus, on the servo. Uh, middle one is a different percentage, and the bottom one is a different percentage yet again. Each one of those corresponding to where we want that servo to be holding that control at when the switch is in that position. So what we do, let's say we're setting up um, some spoilers or something and we want it over here on, well, let's say we got flaps there. Let's say we put it here on switch F, okay? Um, so we uh, pick the switch uh, as we do, moving the switch when you've got it pressed in. Okay, we select that switch and then we can adjust the values. Now this will come up standard as a 100% zero and, and minus 100 down here. Uh, so that would be how it is when you first come up. But let's just say we decide to change it to, um, you know, 96, uh, 10, and uh, just something to make it different, uh, 94, okay? Okay, so we've picked some values in there, but in actual fact, what we would be, we would be doing is we would be um, doing it just like the way we set up the flaps. And that is, instead of just arbitrarily picking values there, we would start out with something kind of in the middle. And so, say, dial this down to, you know, 40-something and make that, um, you know, minus 40 or 50 or whatever. So we, we don't want to be at wide, wide uh, way out at the extremes because we might damage the control by trying to push it too far. We don't know exactly how far the thing is going to go. So we'd set it up uh, with some very mild things like that, or maybe have them all zero. Uh, we would then bind our transmitter to the plane, and with the transmitter bound to the plane, we would then come in here, and we would make our adjustments. And so we go to this first one here, and we would dial this up, and we'd watch that control surface, get it where we want it, press it in, Move to the next one, uh, and uh, of course we're talking about switch F, so you know when you did that up here for this first one, you'd have it in position zero up there, adjust it where you position you want it with the switch in that position, move it down to the next position, then come over to the uh, uh, next item on the list here, and that's the middle position, as you can see the box there, and so with the um, uh, the plane bound, we can move that, see what's happening to the control, get it where we want it, select that one, 
move the switch to the next position, get down there, press in. We adjust that particular one watching the control, get it where we want it, press it in, and we're all set. Okay, uh, after you've got them set up, and of course you can set up multiple ones, so that's switch F, and you could go in here and pick any of the other switches that you might want, either by dialing or flicking the switch. Um, but um, a after you've done that, you can go down here to Next, and then it shows you where each of the switches, uh, how each of the switches is set. So the defaults are, you know, 100, 0, minus 100 depending on whether it's three position or two position. Um, but you can see here on switch F, we got 68, 15, minus 38, just right where we left it. We go to the next and it just gives you the remaining switches. And of course, uh, whichever transmitter you've got will vary as to how many switches are there. So that's uh, basically all it is as far as a digital switch uh, setup. And if you have the um, appropriate uh, controls on your plane, such as die flaps and things like that, um, you'll be able to make good use of that. Well, this is RC Jim signing off. Uh, as, you, as we finish, I encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, that's a help to us, and it'll be a help to you because it keeps all of our content right there handy. You can go through our uh, playlists, see the items that you want, have a look. And we have a lot of exciting things, some great flying from our club, uh, some tips and tricks, and um, yeah, lots of stuff. So um, thank you very much, and have a great day.